All right, guys, today we're gonna to be talking about my favorite steals for EDC and just in general. And I'm gonna be breaking this down into four primary categories, talking about stainless steel, tool steel, carbon steel, or high carbon steel and powdered steel. I think it's worth to note here, there will be a little bit of overlap. I'm gonna to try to clarify as much as I can um, these particular steels. I'm also gonna talk about another steel that I think is very slept on and just sneak that one in here too. But anyways, let's jump into the first one, which is stainless. So stainless steels, like I said, there are many different types of steels and such uh, out there, but broadly speaking, stainless steels are those that are not particularly powder powdered metal, so they're not made um, up of powdered metal. And so therefore they also usually have higher chromium contents and tend to be obviously stainless. I think it's also worth noting too, to a lot of people who are outside of the knife world, stainless steels are one of the most frustrating steels out there because a lot of people will come into knife stores or, you know, like want to buy knives and they want stainless steel thinking that it's stain proof steel, but literally it is in the name, it is stainless. Does not mean that it is stain proof, but that it is stainless. So first off, we're going to talk about my kind of two picks for this. The runner up is 14C28N and this is a really honestly good steel. It's very similar to ABL. Um, this is a Sandvik steel and I will say Sandvik definitely knows their steels. And I think that this is like probably one of the best steels out there because it dominates such a reasonable price point. Like a lot of Civivi's knives, such as this one that you're seeing right here, the Spiny Dogfish, the Cubit, um, many, many of their knives use this. Many other Chinese knife companies use this steel. And I think it's because it brings such a high performance for what it is to such a reasonable price. And originally this was kind of uh, first a steel that we saw on a lot of like Mora's like Garberg and things like that. And so it, it is a good value steel <clears throat> with excellent performance characteristics. Of course, it is a stainless steel by nature. So it is very stain resistant. So it's really good for that. It has a good edge retention. And I think what impresses me the most is a decent toughness. A lot of stainless steels, because they have such a high chromium content means that they really decrease, like they become more brittle of a knife or a steel, I should say. And so you sacrifice a lot of your toughness to gain that um, stain resistance. So, or corrosion resistance. So I think, so I think that uh, 14C28N like AEBL are really impressive steels because they maintain a high level of toughness and corrosion resistance. And that also conversely translates to pretty good edge retention. So first up or for my like first place for stainless is good old 154 CM. Now 154 CM is broadly used by Emerson. 154 has kind of fallen by the wayside now. It's been largely replaced by things like 14C28N because it's generally cheaper to get 14C28N to my knowledge than it is 154CM. Like looking at like New Jersey Steel Baron, if you were to just legitimately buy the steel, it's cheaper to get 14C28N or ABL than it is 154CM. However, I like 154CM's really proven track record. It's been around for a while in use as knives. Of course, this is one of the original uh, knife steels of Benchmade. And at the time Benchmade was using it. Companies like Emerson were using it and Emerson still continues to use it to this day. And I think 154 is, in my opinion, kind of like the D2 of steels, uh, of stainless steels, where, you know, initially it was seen on a lot of higher end custom knives. And I think because those knives have moved off to like S30V, S45VN, MagnaCut, you know, this steel kind of gets brushed under the rug. But honestly, its performance, especially in freshwater environments, is great. It really does not rust like at all. And so it, I, I should say, like I said, around like non salt water environments, if you are going into salt water environments, I'd probably say, uh, or if you're around salty, um, kind of water, I'd recommend 14 C 28 and over 154. but in freshwater environments, it is a really great steel and like legitimately won't rust on you. So <clears throat> it is a really good one. And I think it's edge retention and it's toughness are also there because back in the day, back when one, one back when 154 CM was more popular, you were 
we're seeing it in everything from folding knives like the Griptilian and things like Emerson were making all the way up to like thick heavy duty choppers. So this was a steel that balanced a good amount of toughness, corrosion resistance, edge retention, and wear resistance. So it was a really good well-rounded steel. It of course, like 14C28N, you know, there are certainly better options nowadays, but it is still a good valid steel. And if you're looking for a specific, you know, stainless, I think it's hard to go wrong with either of those. All right, moving into tool steels. Now I only have one of my options here to show you, and this one might be a little bit you know, contentious because some people might really call this more of a powdered metal because it technically is a powdered metal, but it's going to be CPM 3V. And 3V is a fantastic steel. I have this in many knives and it is one of the toughest steels out there. Like genuinely there are, you know, things like Magna Cut are a really good blend of all around all purpose steels. But you know, like there are a handful of steels like we'll talk about in a little bit that are just masters of their trade. And I think CPM 3V, even in comparison to 4V, 15V, um, 3V is just an incredibly tough steel like it's not the most corrosion resistant it doesn't have the best edge retention but my god you try to like legitimately see knives that you can just pound through like you know uh, like cut up a helicopter with or a car like this is the kind of steel you can do that with cpm 3v is incredibly tough and that is a bit of a pro and a con because it is hard to sharpen but at the same time too it is literally something that you can beat the hell out of and it just keeps going so for me tool steels when i think of like a tool steel for like a serious outdoor knife cpm 3v is very high on that list because it is just incredible now if i had to choose a non-powdered metal steel i would say probably o1 tool steel would be my choice and it's kind of difficult because some people would probably expect me to say you know like oh what about d2 and i think d2 is a really well-rounded steel is a good steel but i think that o1 performs a lot like the carbon steel choice that i have and i won't give it away just yet but o1's very springy it has it trades a lot of its um, corrosion resistance characteristics for a lot of edge retention and durability. So you end up getting a, a very hard use steel. It's kind of like the CPM 3V, but not like as good as CPM 3V because it's not powdered and it's not, you know, like as corrosion resistant. But it is one of those steels that has a lot of bounce back to it, it can take an absolute punishment. So I like O1 tool steel if I had to choose a non-powdered steel. Um, I think it's probably the best one because with A2 and D2 and uh, other tool steels that are more conventionally out there, I think a lot of them are very prone to being brittle and breaking, especially A2 is very brittle. Um, so you have to be cautious with it. I would say maybe as an aside, if, if that doesn't quite float your boats, the S7 tool steel is probably my absolute favorite tool steel. The only reason it's not in this list is because unless you know a custom knife maker or unless you yourself are a custom knife maker, trying to find a knife made in S7 uh, tool steel is basically impossible. I think there, I think I've only encountered one singular company that made a knife that like you could buy like semi-production in S7 tool steel, which I think is a really big shame because in my opinion, S7 is probably the best tool steel, non-powdered tool steel that you can get because S stands for shock. And so it was literally a tool steel that was designed to resist shock. So it's a very well-performing steel from all the documents documentation that's out there. Um, it's just good luck trying to find a knife made in S7. There's no like, you know, production knives made in S7. Whereas with O1, um, Spyderco made a bushcrafting knife out of it. Um, who is it? Uh, LT Wright loves using O1 and so does um, Battle Horse knives. So it's more easy to get a knife made out of O1 than S7. Moving into the final category, and this is gonna be powdered metals. Like I said, you may see CPM 3V is already being a powdered metal so all right so before we talk about our last two contestants here let's talk about carbon steel now carbon steel i feel like especially in the last 10 years has definitely gone the way of the dinosaur and that's partly for a good reason like i said a lot of the characteristics that we came to love about carbon or high carbon steels have been 
basically duplicated in a lot of modern steels. Things like Magna Cut really give you like all the advantages of most of your like 1095s and stuff, but with the huge advantage of like, so when you take a look at that, you're like, why choose, you know, a high carbon steel? So the biggest reason I would say is high carbon steels are still like the cheapest steels out there. They're the easiest to manufacture and they still offer some decent performance. So for me, I would say 5160 spring steel is probably gonna be the best of the best. Now, well heat treated 1095 does exist. And I think that that is a solid contender, but undoubtedly like 5160 is going to take advantage of the best properties of carbon steel. It has a lot of spring, the edge rolls, it doesn't snap or chip. It's going to be a very durable steel to take an absolute beating. It's kind of like the non, um, it's like the high carbon version of CPM 3V. And so that's what I would say for me would be a high carbon steel that I would choose. And so there are other options out there, of course, like I said, 1095, 1083, I believe, um, and 1075 are all existing options. But once you start to get lower and lower, like 1060, 1075, and into that spectrum, you just get edge retention that's incredibly poor. So you get a very durable knife that you can absolutely beat on, but it really doesn't harden that well and it doesn't hold an edge very well. So you really need that higher carbon content to make carbon steels work. And I think like, once again, dipping down into like 1075, you basically get all of the cons of carbon steel, but without any of the pros, like it rusts like crazy and it also doesn't hold an edge very well. So it's kind of like the 420 HC of like the carbon knife world. So anyways, moving into the last and final sector, and that is powdered steels. So this one, I divide into two, and that is that we have Magna Cut and we have CPM S110V. And I really love S110V because to CPM 3V, CPM S110V, in my opinion, is kind of a master of its trade. Is it as corrosion resistant as Magna Cut? No. Is it as tough as Magna Cut? No. But does it have better edge retention than Magna Cut? Yes, like it should, depending once again on heat treat, it, your results may vary, but CPM S110V has higher or some of the highest um, wear resistance of any steel. Like CPM S90V and S110V have the highest um, wear resistance of any steel out there. So what that means is by wear resistance is so long as you're not like chipping the edge, snapping it, breaking it, so long as you're not like cutting something that's going to, you know, damage your edge through it being too hard like say you're just cutting paper you're cutting you know rope you're doing you know cutting cutting fibrous materials you're processing meat whatever um, those types of things CPM S110V will hold an edge longer and it is an incredibly uh, high wear resistant steel and that is because there is a high presence of vanadium in this guy and it just is a very well performing steel so S90V and CPM S110V are definitely masters of their trade. Once again, that's where things like Magna Cut are so nice and special is because they are a jack of all trades, but they're also a master of none. So you see things like Magna Cut and it is a really good performing steel, but I still personally have a soft spot in my heart for things like CPM 3V, things like S90 and S110V because they are just so specialize in what they do and what they do they do very well so this is my version of s110v or the one knife that i have in it and of course this one's wearing a nice mirror polished edge as i'm sure you guys can see there it is absolutely insanely sharp and uh yeah it's just a fantastic knife this of course is a spyderco manix 2 in black g10 so anyways, then we have Magna Cut. Now this is a Tactile Knife Co. Maverick. I have many knives, well maybe not many, but I have a handful of knives in Magna Cut. This one's actually, uh, I'm borrowing from a knife friend, but I'd say probably my version that I like the most so far is my American Blade Works Model 1. Um, with the Warncliffe, but anyways, I certainly have a few few versions of Magna Cut, but either way you slice it, Magna Cut is definitely the most well-rounded steel out there, and I'm not the largest fan of it. Once again, there's a lot of people jumping on the boat for Magna Cut, and I probably see it as a pro and a con, um, but it is a very well-rounded steel, and I think the biggest thing that I'm super happy about Magna Cut's existence is 
like I'm seeing a lot of companies like Leatherman, you know, Leatherman's choosing to make their multi-tools have knives in Magna Cut. Like that's a huge jump because previously like they had some models that had S30V and S30V is okay, but it's definitely getting long in the tooth. So seeing like companies like Leatherman choosing Magna Cut is a really, really cool thing to see happen. And so I do like that part about it, but as far as the powdered metal steel goes, like I said, it basically Magna Cut well heat treated just does everything well. And so it doesn't necessarily master anything. Once again, it's not going to be as tough as CPM 3V. It's not gonna hold an edge quite as long as CPM S110V, but it will do everything very well. Like it's gonna be more corrosion resistant than S110V. It's gonna be more corrosion resistant than CPM3V. It's going to <clears throat> do a lot of things that no one particular knife can do just a little bit better. So it's a very nice steel for those regards and I'm definitely happy to see it. I'm also happy to see that I don't know the exact prices of Magna Cut, but by and large, it does appear that Magna Cut is also a, I don't want to say a cheaper steel to buy because I don't think that it's a cheaper steel to buy, but that it is a more affordable steel to buy. So generally speaking, you know, S110V, S90V, a lot of these niche, you know, like M390, a lot of these kind of niche steels are very expensive. Like once again, if you go to the New Jersey Steel Baron or someone like that to just buy the steel, like you're going to be paying a premium. So I like to see that, you know, Magna Cut, at least from what I can tell, is coming in competitive with a lot of other steels like S30, S45 VN and stuff like that. So it's not cheap, like it's not as cheap as something like 1095 or ABL, but it's coming in at a more affordable price. And so it's giving especially knife makers the ability to offer a very, very, very well-rounded steel at a more affordable option. And I think that's why you see companies like Leatherman buying into this steel is this is a steel that they can, you know, afford to put in some of their high end multi-tools. So anyways guys that's kind of my take and experience and kind of um, understanding of steels and my favorite steels in each one of these categories. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully it was informative. As always God bless and I'm out.